In this video, I will show you some of the most serious problems when it rains, aqua planning, hazards when cornering, and what to watch out for in urban areas. Road conditions are not always perfect, but do you know the dangers of driving on wet surfaces? The main difference between dry and wet roads is the grip. The direct link between you and the road are the tires at their contact points. But what happens when you lose contact with the ground? Keep watching to find out. For aqua planning to occur, two factors are needed, high speed and deep water. Going onto it, purely physically the tires fail to keep up with displacing the water and actually lift over it. At that point, the contact with the tarmac disappears and the traction becomes zero. One senses the sudden change and usually reacts, either applying the brake or shaking the steering wheel slightly left-right. However, these actions are totally wrong because when the car finds traction again, it usually results in a spin or accident. Here is a visual. The car next to us is traveling at high speed and pushing some water. Right here, that amount is getting larger, which means that the water is getting deeper and now notice the driver is slamming on the brakes. From here on, it's almost certain that he is to lose control. How to recognize places where aqua planning occurs? Usually deep water merges with the wet road, and if you don't look closely, you may not notice that you are about to cross a dangerous section. The next time you are driving on a highway and it's raining, keep an eye on what the cars in front of you are driving through, and if you see them pushing more water to the sides at some point, it's likely that you are about to drive to deep water as well. When I say deep, I don't mean 10-15 cm deep puddle, I mean those little rivers that form when a ditch is clogged or for some other reason. There, the depth is a little more than a centimeter, but is absolutely enough for aqua planning to take place. The water doesn't even need to run all the way to the road. Often, it's at the edge of the lane, but that doesn't make it any less dangerous. When only the left or right tires go into aqua planning, there again is a steering imbalance that drivers instinctively compensate for with the steering wheel. So, whenever you see running water at the edge of the road, avoid it if possible. Most places where aqua planning occurs are marked with signs. They shouldn't be ignored because even after it has stopped raining, sometimes the danger hasn't passed. The best way to deal with aqua planning is by eliminating one of two factors. While it's impossible to remove the deep water, we can reduce the speed. Select the speed at which you feel confident that aqua planning will not occur. If you do happen to get caught in aqua planning on the road, it would be best to do nothing. Let the car pass through the deep water and then slow down. However, aqua planning is not the only danger that can happen to you on wet conditions. Let me show you what else can surprise you. In rainy weather on suburban roads, particular care must be taken to recognize the radius of the turns you are about to make. The most dangerous are the so-called closing turns, or simply said, turns that start as gentle but end as sharp. A major mistake driver makes is that they enter at the speed that is appropriate for the gentle part, but when time comes for the sharp, the car is already understeering or oversteering. And if in dry weather these mistakes are not punished, in the wet they are penalized severely. It's precisely because of the lack of sufficient traction that most road accidents occur in rainy weather. It's not a good idea to drive through puddles, especially on unfamiliar roads. There may be a big hole under the water that's out of sight. My advice is to be vigilant in the rain, to keep a safe distance and speed. In urban conditions, these are the main causes of road accidents. Stopping distances increase significantly due to reduced traction, but many drivers don't take that into account, especially in places where the asphalt is too smooth. For example, the grip of the top layer is gone from wear. In bad weather, the quality and condition of your tires are crucial to your safety. But what other elements also matter when you drive on wet surfaces? Each tire has a thread whose grooves are designed to push water away from it for maximum traction. With new tires this is easy as they have about 8 mm of groove depth. But over time this depth decreases due to wear and tear. And the smaller it is, the more easily the car loses grip on wet surfaces. It's your job to regularly monitor the condition of your tires and when the grooves reach a depth of 4 mm, replace the tires with new ones. However, the thread is not the only factor that affects the grip on wet tarmac. 
Powerful SUVs and sports cars usually have wider tires. While this helps for better grip in dry weather, the opposite is true when entering deep water. A wider tire pushes out deep water harder than a thinner tire. Check your tire pressures regularly. If you don't know how much it should be, check the sticker on the door or on the tank lid. In my career as a rally driver, aqua planning was the very reason for my worst crash. It's insidious because it always happens at high speed and without expecting it. To stay safe at wet conditions, the most important tips are first, keep a safe distance, second, choose the right speed, and third, use good tires. Visibility is also paramount and we must avoid fogging up the windows and smearing wipers. If you've liked the video and think that the information in it can help improving road safety, share it, like it and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We will do our best to give you more helpful tips for safety driving.